Okay, let's get started and whoever is coming late can just join us a little bit later. Hello and welcome everyone to our debate after the online screening of Midline Traveler. My name is Zora Siebert and I'm head of the EU policy program at the Heinrich Böll Foundation in Brussels. I kindly welcome Jawa Taiman, who will be interpreting for us tonight from direct to English and back. Uh, hello everybody, good to see you guys, well, virtually see you, you can see me, so glad to be here, thank you. Yeah. Today, we have the great pleasure to talk to the director of Midnight Traveler, Hassan Fasili, who you have seen in the film, Eric Marquardt, who is a Green Member of the European Parliament and who is very active in the field of refugee and migration politics. He keeps us up to date about the situation of refugees on the Greek islands. And Ziga Yehuda from the Close Up Initiative, supporting filmmakers in the Middle East and North America, North Africa. Thank you very much, Ziga and Close Up, who helped setting this event up. Thank you. Do you want to translate, Jawed? Uh, yeah, uh, امی خود برنامه زینا را گفت که خود زورا از کدام بخش است و خود اریک از کدام بخش آمده و در کدام قسمت مثلا به خاطر مهاجرین کار میکنه و همچنان از خود زیگال معرفی کرد که اینا کی هستن و آل ما شروع میکنیم به برنامه خیلی خوب، حالا ما شروع کنیم؟ یه، شد هی ستارت؟ Uh, I'll, I'll just I'll just uh, give the people some uh, some information on how they can participate. So please uh, note everybody that this debate will be recorded. You can find it afterwards on the YouTube channel of the Bell Foundation. And we also take questions from the audience. So if you want to participate, you can submit your question at the bottom of your screen in the Q&A tool. Fazisa, we have a lot of questions زورا تشریح کرد و گفت که چی کنن سوالای خود اگر میخواین در پایان میتونن سوالای خود نوشته کنن و سوالا رو پرسان کنه و بعد از باز شروع میکنیم Great. So on the film after being threatened by the Taliban for his documentary piece filmmaker Hassan Fasili was forced to flee Afghanistan what follows was a three year odyssey that Hassan his family Uh, with his wife Fatima and their two daughters, Nagis and Zara, carefully documented on video with their phones. The film Midnight Traveler follows their journey and highlights the family's strength to persevere. Like thousands of others, Hassan and his family ended up in Europe, seeking safety and a stable life. Midnight Traveler debuted at the Sundance Festival in 2019. The film also ran with great success at last year's Berlinale Festival. خب زیادتر درباره امی خود فیلم فازلی صاحب گفت که فیلم میدنی تراولر رو شما ساختین و این سفر شما رو نشان میده هم برای فامیلتان هم برای خانمتان و لادهیتان که از اونجا سفر کردین و افتتای از این فیلم شما در فیستیوال سندانس بوده در سال 2019 و فقط این این جزیات بود که درباره شما Thank you, Jared. And before we get started, I would like to give the word to Zigal, who will tell us about the importance of supporting filmmakers from the Middle East and North Africa living in Europe and the challenges that they're facing. Ale nobat metim bere khanum Zigal ke sobat kona da bari film sazrei ke da sharq mianastan wa chakadari barnama barashan mohimas. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. for the entire team of the Heinrich Böll Stiftung. I'm very happy to be here and welcome everybody that is joining us, uh, I believe from around the world. Uh, I'm sure there are some filmmakers that uh, we know that are joining and they're very excited to meet all of us and especially to have this discussion with uh, Hassan. So I'm the founder and executive director of Close Up. It's an international organization based in Brussels Uh, supporting filmmakers from the Middle East and North Africa. Uh, we are actually five individual partners from uh, Morocco, Turkey, uh, the Netherlands, New York, and I'm based in Tel Aviv. 
خب خود معرفی کرد که کی هست اسم خود گفت و درباره فعالیت های خود گفت که اول خود تشکری کرد از دوستایی که در اینجا هستن و همچنانی که فعالیت هایشان در کجا هست یا تر کدام فلم سازار در منطقه که اینا سپورت میکنن و خود دفترشان در براسلز هست و چه تقریبا پنج نفر هستن و خود خانم سیگال هم در تلویف کار میکنن So uh, we are, for the past 14 years, uh, been working with filmmakers, supporting filmmakers from the Middle East and North Africa, uh, from uh, Afghanistan, from Algeria, from Egypt, from Jordan, from Lebanon, from Iran, from Iraq, from Israel, from Palestine, from Morocco, from Tunisia, Algeria, um, um, uh, Turkey, United Arab Emirates, Syria. And as uh, most of you, of course, knows, uh, we are talking about uh, a lot of complexities from this region. And we are very much intrigued in supporting new voices from this region, uh, as there are uh, incredibly urgent stories coming from uh, the region. And we believe uh, that filmmakers like Hassan and the film that you've seen, Midnight Traveler, uh, has a huge impact on uh, not only our region, Europe, around the world, and the support that we're providing in terms of um, um, the creative process of the filmmakers uh, that they are doing uh, is part of, of what we are doing. And I will elaborate in a second. I'll just give Jawad the time to translate. خب میگی نما تقریبا 14 سال است که فیلم سازار در منطقه مثلا در شرق میانه طرف آسیا مثلا ممالک مثل افغانستان و ممالک دیگه را که نام گرفت در این ممالک ما همیشه کمک میکنیم و بر ما این بسیار مهم است که ما بتانیم مشکلات و یا چالش هایی که اینا رو برو میشن این چالش ها را بتانن خوبتر بیان کنن و فیلم سازایی که مثل خود حسنه هست امروز آمده و فلم خود نشان داده او شما این چی ای رو ببینین شما و کسایی که در چهار طرف دنیاست اینا رو ببینین و امو صدای واقعی که در او مناطقه است او باید شونیده شوه توسط از این فلم سازا ما اونا رو کمک میکنیم so Often we hear uh, stories um, about the region and we believe that this, those, those stories that we hear from the region should be told by the filmmakers themselves And I think Midnight Traveler is a great example of how this film breaks stereotypes and uh, makes us all think of what we think we know, who are these people that are immigrants or refugees uh, coming to Europe, especially coming to Europe. I think breaking those stereotypes of how the media portrays immigrants and refugees uh, is um, in Midnight Traveler, when people are watching this film, is a great example of how Uh, they, these voices of emerging filmmakers from the region changes um, our perception, uh, which is sometimes um, uh, what we learn from the media is not really uh, uh, the voices that are coming from this region. So I think the complexities, the nuances that the filmmakers are portraying are highly important to be, to be uh, supported. Because this is the only way uh, that uh, I think uh, we could somehow not, I wouldn't use the word educate, but maybe uh, help us all understand that the complexities are within the people who are coming from these communities and not as often uh, portrayed by the media itself, which is um, um, in totally different. And this is also something that has to do with uh, different policies in regards to uh, immigrants and refugees, which I hope we will discuss later with uh, Eric and of course with you, Hassan. Um, <laughs> well, the fact that in the country, for example, the things that are happening in the country, in the country that you are in, and the problems that the refugees have when they travel, who is better to say that they can be able to talk about these things in the country that are happening? تجربه کده و یک نوع شیوه که دیدگاه خاصه که مردم با مقابل ماجرین دارن و میبینن یا دیدگاه منفی یا مثبت است هر چیزی که هسته عموما امو یک دیدگاه بسیار خاص منفی که دارن او را ما میخوایم که از بین ببریم و نشان بتیم به ذریعه از این داستان هایی که فلمار اینا جور میکنن از طریق قضیه ما نشان بتیم که خب 
داستان واقعی چی است و حقایق چی است که شرایط مهاجرین چی است که بعدا ما میتونیم با دوستای دیگه که صحبت میکنن از طریق از اونام بیشتر شما بشنیم Thank you. I'll just end up uh, these um, uh, uh, words with uh, we believe strongly in the diversity, uh, in an inclusive society, uh, and in pluralism. And we believe that, again, filmmakers like uh, Hassan, who are coming to uh, finding themselves finally in Europe, where we see many filmmakers from our region are actually being immigrants in Europe, they are assets to society. Uh, and not as many times we see portrayed in the media, um, um, uh, mostly uh, in mainstream media, as a burden. I think these people that are coming from such a beautiful ancient uh, societies and culture are bringing to Europe and other continents uh, the beauty of their culture. And this is what we are supporting. And I hope that this discussion will again elaborate on uh, these uh, beautiful nuances of how Hassan Uh, portrayed his own journey with his wife and two beautiful uh, daughters, very courageous family, and we of course salute that. خب میگه ما دلیلی که ما چون این کسر همایا میکنیم به خاطر مثلا یک جاسازی یا شامل شدن شان در جامع است و اینا کسایی نیستن که ما بگیم که اینا یک بار یا بار دوش یک جامع میشه. اگر در اروپا میان یا در آلمان میان یا هر جایی که میان اینا بار دوش نیستن اینا جز سهم از او جامعه میشن یعنی از اینا یک استفاده خوب میتانه شد و نه ای که چیزایی که نشان داده میشه در میدیای مختلف که اینا بار دوش جامعه میشن در حال که اینا یک, 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 یک سهم بزرگ جامعه هستن و شاید هم به دردشان بخورن از او خاطر ما کوشش میکنیم زیادتر وقت که اینا را حمایه کنیم Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much, Ziga. Thank you very much, Jawed, for translating. And thank you for this uh, important statement, Ziga. So now I see we already have one question from the audience. I also have a question to Hassan. So please, everyone, don't be shy. Put your questions in the Q&A tool. And to get started, Hassan, how was it to film Midnight Traveler while at the same time experiencing this journey through Central Asia and Europe. How was it for you? He wants to say hello first and then he will come to your question. Hello, um, hello everyone. Um, I'm very happy that you watched my film. I hope uh, you enjoyed it. And um, um, uh, my English is not very well and uh, Javid uh, helping me uh, for translate. Thank you uh, for thank you Siegel and thank you Zora and, and thank you uh, Heinrich Bull Stiftung uh, for this event and uh, thank you uh, thank you for watching my film. خب سوال زوره ای بود که خودت چطور وقتی که سفر میکدی و آمدی از آسیا طرف اروپا و اروپای شرق و خود آسیا چی یک تجربه بود که در چونین حالت دشوار هم فلم بسازی و هم سفر کنی؟ تجربه خیلی سخت بود و خیلی پیچیده بود من سعی میکنم کوتاه توضیح بیتم امیدوارم که بتانم توضیح بیتم It was, a, it was a harsh experience. I'm going to explain it in brief, not in so much detail, uh, so that uh, everybody can understand. همزمان ما هم فیلم می ساختیم و هم خودمان رو باید می رساندیم به مقصد. این خیلی سخت بود که ما هم به فکر امنیت خودمان باشیم و هم به فکر امنیت فیلم باشیم. این خیلی سخت بود. It was very hard for me to, uh, to take two things into account. One, getting myself and my family to my destination. Two, making a film at the same time. So balancing both uh, was pretty difficult for me. And the difficulty that came to us was that we didn't have a lot of money. We took our money from our friends. We took our money from our friends. We took our money from our friends with our mobile. و پول قرض می گرفتیم پس پولی زیادی نداشتیم همین پولی کمی که داشتیم باید من مدیریت می کردم که هم خرج غذای خانواده شوه هم خرج سفر شوه و هم خرج 
موبایل چه موبایل ما بعضی وقت میشکست بعضی وقت چارج خلاص بیتری خلاص میکرد چارجرش میسوخت بعد بیتری میخریدم بعد کمره میخریدم کم... یک بار کمره موبایل ما شکست یعنی اینمه موبایل شده بود یک عضوی از خانواده ما که هم نان میخورد این هم خرج کار داشت Okay, it was very hard for me to, to as I said, uh, to balance uh, everything because um, I was uh, making the film using the same mo mobile phone, uh, plus I had to take care of the amount of money that I had to balance it out. So I would ask my friends using the same mobile phone, I would call around, uh, get uh, money from friends from around the world to send me so I could continue my journey and then use the same mobile to do our filming and then sometimes Um, the camera of mobile would break and I would buy a new lens for it or a new camera lens for the mobile. And somehow the mobile phone became part of this family uh, in the journey that we were taking. Yeah. <laughs> همه چهار نفر ما یک موبایل داشتیم با او یک موبایل ما با ویدیو می گرفتم با همون موبایل زهرا و نرگس فیلم های انیمیشن می خواستن ببینن با همون یک موبایل فاطمه با مادرش با خانوادش در تماس بود با همون یک موبایل ما با همکارامون و با دوستام در تماس بودیم بعد یک موبایل بود یک خانواده و هزار کار گای نوبت می کردیم موبایل نوبت می کردیم که از فلان تایم تا فلان تایم دخترا از فلان تایم تا فلان تایم خانم و گای با هم جنجال می کردیم می گفتیم نوبت ما است اون می گفت نوبت هر کس موبایل طرف خودش کش می کرد so since we had one mobile phone and we were um, kind of four people uh, of different ages and demands um, so sometimes um, i would use that for my filming uh, my daughters would use it to watch some cartoons or or listen to music. My wife wanted to call the family back home. So we were kind of struggling amongst each other in order to get hold of that one mobile phone that we had to use it for filming the documentary as well as doing our normal social uh, um, activities that we were supposed to do. <laughs> می دیدم خانوادم در خودم و خانوادم در یک شرایط بسیار سخت قرار داریم کمره می که روشن می کدوم پشت برای مثال من کمره من روشن می کدوم دنیای این طرف کمره بسیار زشت و سخت و بد بود دنیای چیزی که من پشت کمره می دیدم زیبایی می دیدم و این من دوچار دو شخصیت می شیدم نمی فهمیدم من به عنوان کارگردان از کمره هم که می بینم لذت ببرم و یا اینکه واقعیت ببینم ناراحت باشم گاهی هم عشق می ریختم و هم نگاه میکردم و لذت میبردم یعنی گای خودم رو گم میکردم که من امیال باید پدر باشم یا باید کارگردان باشم این شاید سختترین بخشی کار بود و یک چلنج بسیار بزرگ به من بود One of the harshest, harshest things was the um, when I was making the film was when I was holding the mobile phone I had two uh, I was divided into two characters and I was observing two different scenarios Behind the mobile was a, a situation if my family was suffering or my daughters, um, uh, that was my family. On, on this side of the telephone, I was looking on a frame which showed me a beautiful shot. Uh, so my character was kind of confused between uh, two environment. I wasn't sure whether I was a director or was I a father or a husband. So balancing, balancing between the two was one of the, 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 the toughest challenge and the harshest moments of my life. Okay, that's it, thank you. I, I don't want to cut you short, but we have a, a few questions already that really uh, connect to what you just said. So can you tell us a little bit more about your motivations for making the film? That was one question. And the other question, which is also kind of a statement, is about this scene where your daughter is dancing to Black or White from Michael Jackson. It's e extremely powerful. I also remember this scene very well. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the creative process behind your movie? Which scenes speak to you and how did you make the creative decisions to portray your daughter's experiences as well? ام میگه که خب اول اول این چیزی که ما میخوام بفهمم میسته که امی یعنی امی اشتیاق که شما داشتین که فیلم بسازین ای از کجا آمد یک و دیگه این صحنه که دخترت با آهنگ مایکل جکسن رقص میکنه که یک 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 صحنه یا خوشی میکنه یک صحنه بسیار عجیب است که خلاقیت یک کارگردان دیگه اصلا نشان میده امی تمام انرژی یا امو جایی را که 
امی چیز پیدا کردی که خلاقیت تا نشان بدی در فیلم ای از کجا آمد چطور تانستی که خلاقیت خود در عرصه کارگردانی فیلمت نشان بدی اول سوال دوم جواب میتونم دوم سوال اول جواب میتونم I'll answer the second question first and then I'll come to the first question to be answered second. درباره خلاقیت و او صحنه دنس با آهنگ مایک جکسون من یک شانسی که داشتم یک خانواده خلاق داشتم من کاری نکردم دخترام خلاق بودن خانمم خلاق بود و اینا کارای بسیار جالب میکردن Okay. Um, it, I mean, I wouldn't give the entire credit to myself as a director being creative. When it comes to creativity, I'm lucky enough to be in a family that's creative. My, my daughters are creative. My wife is creative. And they did certain things which was unplanned. So I guess uh, that would, that's what I could say. And that scene, when Michael Jackson has a need for the truth, that the energy of us, sometimes when our heart is very difficult, بعض وقتی که خیلی خسته می شد معمولا دو, دو کار می کرد یا موبایل می گرفت می رفت ویدیو می گرفت برای, برای فیلم خیلی از سحنای که بسیار زیبا و قشنگه نرگیز خودش گرفته بدونی که ما بگم خودش رفته گرفته و بعض وقتا موزیک پلی میکرد و دنس میکرد یعنی به وسیله ویدیو گرفتن و به وسیله دنس کردن او احساسات خودش نرگیز تخلیه میکرد خود راحت می ساخت Okay, uh, just to explain a little bit more about this uh, Michael Jackson dance uh, scene, uh, Nargis, uh, whenever he was upset or angry or sad, uh, she would either uh, uh, kind of play music or dance to it or just pick up the camera uh, and go film anything that came up. So pretty much uh, a lot of things that you see in the film are filmed by her, um, uh, which was a kind of a getaway for her to use the mobile and film certain things. حالا سوال اول ای که گفتن که اگه من درست سوال چون متوجه شده باشم گفتن انگیزه ای که فیلم بسازین که یک قدر بتانین تحمل بکنین انگیزهش از کجا میاد من درست فهمیدم سوال ها درست انگیزه ای برمیاده به قبل از اینکه ما فیلم شروع بکنیم بعض اتفاقات افتاد و اتفاقات کوتاه خلاصه میگم تا شما انگیزه من رو بهتر بفهمین Okay, uh, in order to answer your first question, uh, where the whole uh, motivation came from uh, in order to make the film, um, I'm going to break it down into a few parts so I can explain better. Uh, we started in 2016. To when we were planning to come illegally. از قبل از 2016 است برمیاد به 2014 و 2015 دی موتیویشن از فروم 2015 اند 2016 من در افغانستان که بودم فعالیت های زیادی داشتم که بخش شده فیلم گفتم نمیخوام زیاد توضیح بدم به خاطر فعالیت ها در کافه هنر و به خاطر ساخت فیلم در افغانستان من تهدید به مرگ شدم ام ام ای دونت وانت تو when it comes to my work in Afghanistan, but, um, you know, working, uh, do, doing my work at uh, art cafe and also filmmaking, I was subject to death threats. بخاطر ساخت فیلم درباره طالبان و کافه هنر تهدید به مرگ شدم هیچ جای قانونی نبود که از من حمایت بکنه هیچ نهاد قانونی نبود که مرا ساپورت کنه و مرا نجات بده هیچ سفارتخانه در افغانستان در کابل نبود که از من حمایت بکنه حقوق بشر نبود جامعه مدنی نبودن ولی هیچ کدامش نخواستم صدای مرا بشنون من دیدم که هیچ راه قانونی وجود نداره که من از افغانستان زنده برایم سالم برایم since there were no ways uh, to to uh, subject myself to a secure environment uh, where none of the embassies or any uh, human rights organization in Afghanistan would hear my voice because of the death threats um, I had no choice uh, but to make a move شما بیشتر کسایی که اینجا هستین فکر میکنم قانون گذار هستین با قانون سر کار دارین من ده هم تایم من با یک قانون روبرو شدم یعنی روبروی من یک قانون بود فقط Um, a majority of uh, viewers maybe today or some who are here in this room are probably uh, somehow related to um, law or uh, law policies. Uh, uh, one uh, area that I was subjected to a certain area of law. شاید قانون های زیادی وجود داشت ولی من با یک قانون روبرو شدم و احساس کردم او یک قانون مرا نجات میده. 
اوکی بو گفته برو فاز او قانونی بود که گفتن اگر میخوای به جای دیگه بری باید از کشور خودت برای از افغانستان برای کشور دوم بری یک مؤسسه از به نام UNHCR UNHCR چیکار میکنه کسی که جانش در خطر باشه به یک کشور سوم انتقال میته این قانون به لازم قانونی من احساس کردم همین یک راه وجود داره and that one law that i was mentioning is probably uh, that uh, the uh, that i would have i thought would have an option is the united nations high commission for refugees who would take you to a third country and that's about all that they could do و در اون شرایطی که من بودم هیچ کشوری نمیتونستم برام ویزا نیاز داشتم تنها جایی که تونستم برام تاجیکستان بود یکی از دوستانم آقای جوانشهر ایدری میان که حالا مرده فوت کرده او به من ویزای تاجیکستان گرفت من قانونی رفتم تاجیکستان تا اینجا من کار قانونی انجام دادم and the only legal thing i did uh, by law was to get a, a legal visa of tajikistan by a friend of mine uh, um to basically enter Tajikistan that's the only legal thing i did the Tajikistan tip the قانون رفتم the UNHCR ما را نپذیرفت قبول نکرد گفت برو به پلیس تاجیکستان پلیس تاجیکستان رفتم دولت تاجیکستان ما را نپذیرفت خودم رفتم به سفارتخانه های زیادی که در شهر دوشنبه بود هیچ سفارتخانه ای ما را نپذیرفت هیچ راه قانونی من پیدا نکردم باز در تاجیکستان and going to uh, many embassies um, in Tajikistan in order to uh, uh, find a secure uh, ground uh, to move on with my life. I was unable to, to find uh, those places. Uh, even United UNHCR couldn't help me anymore. یک سال و دو ماه من همه راه های قانونی که وجود داشته تلاش کردم سعی کردم ولی هیچ راهی پیدا نکردم که به لحاظ قانونی بتانم یا در تاجیکستان زندگی کنم و یا از تاجیکستان به کشور دیگه برم. And I tried for a, a year and two months in order to try uh, to find a place to live legally or move to a country to live legally, but um, I couldn't find an option after trying very hard. آلمان در دوشنبه به ما گفتن که ویزا میتیم به شما پاسپورت های ما رو گرفتن حتی پولی ویزا از ما گرفتن عکس از ما گرفتن از ما اینترویو گرفتن و ما گفتن ویزا میتیم ما خیلی خوشحال شدیم Um, the only embassy that offered us uh, um, uh, was offering to help us was the German embassy who took our photographs and all the details um, and we were very happy about that. خیلی خوشحال شدیم پروسس بود که به ما ویزا بیتن بعد از یک ماه تقریبا از سفارت آلمان به ما زنگ زدن گفتن که به شما ویزا نمیتیم بیاین پاسپورتاتون رو پس بگیریم گفتیم چرا گفتن که رئیس جمهور افغانستان اشرف غنی با خانم انگلا مرکل صدر صدر اعظم آلمان یک چیزی رو امضا کردن طبق او امضا یک قانونی شده طبق او قانون به شما ویزا نمیتیم so um, uh, later on we were rejected uh, visa was not offered by the german embassy when we asked why they said that our president اشرف غنی signed a, a treaty with angela merkel Uh, due to that reason or law a new law that uh, um, uh, we shouldn't be given visa so that's why ma da sharait faqat rai qachaq baram man rubaroon me didum hazaran nafar kasai ki qabl az mazir aamade budan jaan khudchan az dast dade budan dar daryaye mediterane va ya dar jangala dar kuha va ma majbur budum ba khanadam in rah buram peshri khudum marg me didum and the only option left for me uh, was Uh, to travel by road by foot uh, to uh, the mediterranean sea or um, you know through jungles and forests and everything um, and the only thing or vision that i had was death uh, that's the only thing i could see ahead پشت سرم می دیدم که هیچ رای قانونی وجود نداره همه قوانین یا همه اداره ها میخوان ما رو نبینن چشمشان گرفتن و ما رو نشنون گوششان گرفتن و این شد انگیزه که احساس کنم من و خانادم شدم سوژه خوبی برای ساخت فیلم مستند and uh, uh, and the fact that none of the uh, nobody heard our voices and nobody wanted to see our suffering uh, became the actual motivation that we started to travel and make that film ma fik nemi kadam film misadam fik nemi kadam daram mubareza mikonam ki bebinan mardam sadai mara va sadai million ha mahajir digar ki be khatir jang misl ma az kishvar shon farar karde budan i qissai film faqat qissai shakhsi ma nes bale ma va khanadam karakter film hastim vali qissa qissai million ha insan ki be khatir jang az kishvar shon majbur shudan farar konan vali qawanin unara nami bine qawanin unara nami shnave 
Okay, and it was uh, it was not a, just making a film, but it was more like a battle uh, with myself because I wanted to show to the world uh, what myself and millions of people like myself um, are going through these uh, mass migrations that are happening uh, in recent time. That's it. Hello, Shadow Tazi said. Pine Sawala de Gamun Tazaras. Great, that's finished. Okay, thank you very much, Hassan, for this. Um answer and for explaining this so well. I think you make a really important point with referring to migration policies and the laws behind all of that and how difficult it is to migrate legally. We also have an, a viewer who was asking about that because your journey was extremely long and challenging. And this is a question that might also be very good for Eric, our other guest here on the panel. It's about the EU migration and asylum policy. Actually, there has been, uh, have been efforts for a reform. In September, the European Commission proposed the new pact on migration and asylum, and they would like to strike the right balance between solidarity and responsibility. Is that possible, Eric? Do you think this is the right way forward? Uh, should I, can I quickly translate to Hassan? Okay. Um, فازیسوب میگه تشکر از اینکه یک دیدگاه خاص را بر ما گفتی و بعض از نکات بسیار مهم اشاره کردی که یکی از کسایی که در پایان سوال هم کرده بود میام بود که مسئله قوانین بود که اتحادی اروپا صادر کرده به خاطر امی مهاجرت عمومی که مردم میکنه و ایره میتونیم ما مثلا از خود اریک پرسان کنیم که Yes, thank you. And thank you for the invitation and the opportunity to see this important film. Um, maybe I start with um, two sentences on the film because it really impressed me. I um, also worked as a photojournalist some years ago and I started in 2015 to make pictures um, also on, I, movie there was a like part on a uh, Röske in Hungary and I was there that's a picture from there it's, uh, by accident here I did not place it for the film and um, but um so so I uh, yeah had some like uh, pictures in my mind when I was there and like uh, I had a yeah interesting experience in watching the film in general I think it's a like great great piece to show the whole journey and the experience people have when they have to flee but in the end it's also like don't get me wrong it's also kind of a, a sad situation that there is a whole movie of three years about a person and you know, a family who suffered and the suffering does not end when you decide to come to Europe to find safety, but it's um, kind of a new start of a, of a like sad journey, um, so to say. And that's really like, I, I think also a problem for the European migration policy. I don't know, Javid, do you want to um, me to stop that you can um, yeah. interpret? Yeah. yeah, I'll quickly yeah. translate that. Uh, ام ریک میگم من هست یک فوتو ژورنالیست کار کردیم که یک رقم رپ میگیره به فیلم و فیلم ما دیدم بسیار سرم تاثیر کرد و عکس که گفته پیش سرم می بینین و تقریبا از می کارای بود که من قبلا می کردم و فیلم وقتی که آدم می بینه چیزی را که متوجه میشه ای که مشکلات یا جنجالایی را که یک کس در سه سال سپری میکنه و او رو ما در یک فلم میبینیم و وقتی که در اروپا میرسه او مشکلات خلاصی نداره یک جنجال جدید و نو با هم رو شروع میشه Yes and um, I also think it's very important to look on the perspectives um, from where we look on migration politics and on refugees in the end. And that's also um, the beginning of the answer to the question um, of the right balance between responsibility and humanity. Or what was the wording? I think the right balance between solidarity and responsibility. That's the wording. And I think like 
the whole thing about asylum policy, like that's why we have it, is um, solidarity. And the responsibility part of it is to bring more solidarity. So that's in the end um, how we do asylum policy in democracies. That's how it should be. And it's not just irresponsible to have a strong focus on the people who have to leave their country because they are, were suffering. And what we see in the movie is basically um, that we failed. We failed to provide legal pathways, to provide fair procedures, to provide protection and safety to people in need. And that's uh, the thing I would also say regarding the new pact for asylum and migration, that of course, we can look in detail what's, where are the good parts in it, where the whole like wrong part of the proposal of the European Commission to have a fresh start on migration policy again. But in the end, it's a situation where we do not change the Dublin system very much. We do not prevent um, camps like Moria. The opposite is the case. With this proposal, you have um, mass camps at the border in detention situations, and we don't provide um, more like fair procedures and safeguards. And that's, um, I think, um, in the end, like not a fresh start on migration as the commission proposed. It's um, just how to bring things into law, which happens at the moment, but which are unlawful at the moment. خب میگم ما باید یک بالانس یا یک مسئولیت ببینیم تقسیم کنیم همدردی را با مسئولیت پذیری وقتی که ما مسئله همدردی و مسئولیت پذیری را میخوایم صحبت کنیم در اتحادی اروپا مثلا بعض قوانین یا چیزهای بررسی میشه در حال فعلی که باید سرزی فکر کنند که ما چطور وقتی که ما نمیتونیم که یک رای آسان را بر زینا مهیا بسازیم وقت از جرکت میکنه ای طرف می آیا. پس ما چی باید بکنیم که شرایط زندگی از اونا بهتر شد مثلا کمپ، کمپ هایی که در یونان است کمپ موریا یا هر چی که است مثلا او با مو شیوه خود است و خراب است اما کوشش دارن که مثلا بزرگتر بسازن او را یا مثلا جای بهتر برشان محیاب بسازن اما ای یک رای حل گفتن نمیشه وقتی که اونمو کمپ بگیری بزرگتر بسازی یک ذره خوبتر بسازی Yes, and um, maybe just uh, two sentences, otherwise I may be too long. <laughs> um, so as Hassan said, uh, like this year, there were 15,000 people we settled all over the world. Resettlement is a like legal way and a safe way to uh, flee from a country to another, right? 15,000, that is um, one of 5,000, more than 5,000 refugees in the world. And that's just um, in a situation where we have this rich European continent and uh, the European Union, which uh, speaks so much about human rights, dignity, and all the values we have. Um, that's um, just, um, yeah, I don't find the real like nice word for like uh, when children are not in bed um, at the moment, but um, it, it, it's just bad and sad and um, disappointing for the whole European project, but especially disappointing because we have the opportunity and the chance to help so many people who are in need of protection and um, safety. And we are not focusing on how to do that and how to create a new society, which is proud to help each other um, in Europe, but we create societies where we fight against each other um, and where we create too much hatred and I hope that the discussion about the new pact of asylum and migration um, kind of gives the opportunity to change the pathway to a more fair and human discussion on migration and asylum. خب تقریبا در حدود 15000 نفر در دنیا بیجا شده یا امسال که ارقام که دارن یا تقریبا 5000 مهاجر هستند و اینجا ما صحبت اتحادی اروپا را میکنیم که اینا از حقوق بشر دفاع میکنن و ایدا دارن که ما حقوق ب... یعنی حمایه حقوق بشر هستیم و در همزمان میبینیم که در ای اروپایی که بسیار معتبر است و پولدار است مردمش به ضد مهاجرین هستند و یا حرکات تشکیل میشه که ضد مهاجرت میباشه میگم امیدوار هستم که قوانین نو که 
یاد میشه اینا میگن این چیزا رو مد نظر بگیرم که مشکلات عمده ای که اینا دارن یا ماجرین دارن باید مد نظر گرفته شه yes so uh, you have another question uh, do i have a follow up question on that so i hear you are very critical of this new proposal and many um, refugee organizations are also very critical but what do you think has to change to make the situation better for people that are stranded at the outside borders of the eu but also to support the member states the few member states who who have to help those people i mean we are we all the eu member states should be taking part in this but in the end it comes down to a few eu member states who carry all the burden so to say what do you think has to change to make this work isawal boss hamber erikas ke mega ke chi bayad شوا مثلا امی قانونی که تازه گفته شده به خاطر امی شرایط مهاجرین و تو سخت مخالفت میکنی با او مخالفش هستی یعنی چی باید شوا که چی تغییرات بیا که بتونیم ما بهتر رو بیان کنیم خوشحال شدم از حرف ایریک بعد از که حرف ایریک تمام شد من کمی درباره حرف ایریک با بعدش صحبت صحبت می کنم I would like to after Eric I would like to just say one or two things in regard to what he said earlier Okay so I try to be fast um like <clears throat> in the end so in general I think what should change is to understand that this uh, pot of gold in the end of the rainbow where we have the new pact and everything is fine in Europe, that will not be there. It will be hard work. And what we have to change, we can also change in the existing legal framework. We have the problem at the moment that in the end, we have a systematic human rights violation at our European external borders. And uh, our European agency Frontex is complicit uh, in this uh, crimes, I would say. And um, that we can change at like, just respect the law. That's the first thing. And um, second thing is that we have to understand that we are not in a migration crisis since 2015 and everything is very chaotic. The last couple of years, we had less than 200,000 irreg irregular arrivals in Europe. Um, if we are not able to, to deal with um, less than 200,000 people um, searching a fair asylum procedure in Europe every year, um, it's, it's not about the asylum procedure or the, the refugees who arrive. It's about like politicians failing to do their job. So that's not like it's not a crisis of the migration or refugees or whatever. It's a crisis that politicians are not able um, to do their job in the end. And that's very like, on a, like scale and if, if you want to be more precise what should change is that people have to have access to asylum procedures and they should not be beaten up <laughs> it's, uh, it's that story that i have to say that so don't beat our people at our borders or throw tear gas at them or lock them up and bring them illegally back to turkey or whatever and just give them access to a fair procedure and give them um, this is a safeguard they have the right to have access to, like lawyers, um, health, and education for children, and these kind of things. And also, if they are vulnerable, make a vulnerability assessment. And after you did that, and you had the possibility to register the people, people can be relocated to places um, in other member states, and there you can um, do a fair and swift asylum procedure because we have 27 member states who are able to do fair and um, swift asylum procedures if you want to and that is basically what should change and the last thing what should change is that um, we we act like nobody wants refugees in Europe or whatever but especially in Germany but also in some other member states there is a willingness to welcome refugees and like um, two bun three Bundesland in Germany want to relocate people from Greece, for example, the TIA ministry prohibiting it. And uh, over 200 cities in Germany said, okay, like we want to um, be in solidarity with refugees, please bring the people here. So you can easily relocate all the refugees in Greece just on a voluntary 
bases to cities in Germany. Um, and, and that should also change that you should not fight for being in solidarity with people in need. You should, um, yeah, have to like um, find arguments if you don't want to help. And that's um, one thing that should also change. Okay, I'm going to try to summon it up uh, for, for Hassan quickly. Um, the goal of Eric was that we, when we were in the four parts of the Italian Europe, we had to do this work. We didn't do it because, for example, we had to get rid of people, get rid of people, or get rid of people, or get rid of people. We are an Italian in Europe, and we say that we are a part of the world. But we don't do it for them, because they are inside Italian. در جای مختلف جای به جای شون میگه ما چقدر ما که مختلف هستیم در ایتالیا هر کس میتونه که مثلا یک بخش شبی گیره دو صد هزار و قدر مهاجر نیست و میتونن در جای مختلف اروپا اینا رو جای به جای بسازن و حتی سه ایالت مختلف و آلمان گفته بود که ما مهاجرین از میتونیم بپذیریم و بیاریم اما وزارت داخله گفته بود مداخله کرده بود در این قسمت نه بنان وقتی که قانون ساخته میشه قانون این رقم ساخته نشه که ما قانون ساختیم و یعنی چیز خوب شد او قانون باید عملی شود و بر ماجرین مفید باشن خیلی خوب من درباره حرف ایریک اگه سوال دیگه نز من کوتاه میخوام صحبت کنم کن ای جست کویکلی این ریلیشن تو وات ایریک سید ای جست وانید تو سی سمتنگ خیلی خوشحالم ایریک عزیز از آشنایی ایم ویری خیلی خوشحالم از اینکه حرفای خوب زدی از که با تو آشنا شدم خوشحال هستم حرفات شنیدم خوشحال شدم ویری هپی تو تو هیر یو تو سی یو اند ایم دلایتد تو هیر وات یو سید حرفای که زدی خیلی مهم بود و خیلی حرفای درستی من به حرفای تو رو نقض نمی کنم حرفات خیلی خوب است واتور یو سید ایم توتالی اگرینگ وات یو سید سو یا و ولی میخوام از نگاهی یک مهاجر حرف بزنم uh, I would like to speak uh, as a immigrant اگر if اگر به یک مهاجر بگویی که چرا مهاجرت کدی چی کار کنیم که بهتر شوه اولین سوالی که به ذهنش میرسه میگه که جنگ نباشه در کشورم مجبور نباشم فرار کنم کشور خودم سرزمین خودم زادگاه خودم امن باشه همدیگه رو نکوشن مرا نکوشن همونجا بمانم زندگی کنم این ذهنیت مهاجری است uh, so as an immigrant if i can say like the first question that if somebody asks me uh, why did you become an immigrant um, my reply or thousands or millions of other refugees would reply the same uh, uh, as i do is that if there is peace in my country, there's stability, and there is no war, there is no way that I would become an immigrant and travel all, all the way to come to Europe. شما بهتر از من میدانید حتما شما بهتر از من میدانید که علت مهاجرت علت های زیادی داره ولی مهمترین علتش بیسیکش یا خیلی امپورتنتش واره جنگ یعنی پس ما به خاطر جنگ مهاجرت میکنیم There are many reasons for migration but one of the most important reason is war uh, uh, that people because of war people uh, travel and migrate امیدوار هستم قوانین طوری نوشته شوه که از هیچ جنگی حمایت نشوه یعنی هیچ جای جنگ نشوه قوانین طوری نوشته شوه که از جنگ ها حمایت نشوه I, I hope that you know if policies are made uh, in future uh, that those policies would not be just in regards to migration but also uh, reasons on how uh, war can be stopped in those countries so that there would be no migration. ما خواهش می کنم نگاهمان این حرف ما به اریک نیست به همه من حتی به خودم نگاهمان این رقمی نباشه وی دی نباشه ما و آنها نباشه همه ما وی هستیم یعنی همه انسان ها وی هستیم ما انسان ها در زمین زندگی می کنیم با هم دیگه جنگ می کنیم ما انسان ها قوانین زندگی ما رو طوری نوشته کنیم که با هم دیگه جنگ نکنیم اگر انسان های بدی وجود داره که جنگ می کنن قوانین طوری نوشته شده که از او جنگ حمایت نشه Um, if future laws are made, uh, I hope that everyone who writes these laws would take into consideration that it's not uh, me and you, it's us, uh, we, uh, together. So any law uh, that would reflect all of us uh, and uh, it would be incorporated in a way to stop or prohibit any form of war in any part of the world. 
من خیلی خوشحال هستم در کشور غربی هستم خیلی خوشحال هستم در آلمان هستم خیلی خوشحال هستم در امنیت هستم من از این بابت خوشحال هستم شانس داشتم زنده رسیدم مهاجرای زیادی هستن زنده نرسیدن در راه جانشان از دست دادن یا اصلا نتونستن از کشورشان فرار کنن به خاطر بمبایی که هست به خاطر تفنگی که هست به خاطر تیری که هست هر روز کشته و زخمی میشوند در کشورهای ما um, I'm, I'm one of the luckiest one to be safe and sound with uh, my family in Europe uh, not worrying about anything and I made it safe and sound and many people didn't make it because either they were killed on the way they died or they were drowned Uh, or uh, some in my country or other countries that were uh, subjected to a bomb attack or uh, lost their life in a way. ای ای مردم کشور ما توسط کی کشته میشه طالبان یا دایش خب طالبان دایش توفنگش از کجا میاره از همه کشورهای غربی خوب از همه کشورهای غربی متمدن و خوب همینا بوم بینا در سر ما میفته ما توسط بوم و موشکی کشورهای غربی خوب کشته میشیم Uh, so uh, so we are mostly subject to the uh, uh, bombs and uh, guns uh, that are uh, used by Taliban or by ISIS and we get killed and who makes those those guns and bombs of course by those good uh, countries that we currently live in uh, uh, um, if I could say uh, those countries if they don't make with their technology those bombs and guns and rockets then people like us the taliban sorry the taliban and the isis would not be able to use those guns to kill us and forces to migrate حالا از یک جای دیگه میخوام بگم مهاجر مجبور میشه فرار میکنه میاد در کشور کشور اروپا خودش میرسنه در کشور شرق اروپا قوانینی که اتحاد اروپا نوشته اونجا مراد نمیشه فساد وجود داره و و عدم مدیریت وجود داره به خاطر فساد و عدم مدیریت مهاجرات در یک وضعیت وحشتناک زندگی میکنن با ما مهاجرات در کشورهای غربی شرقی اروپا مثل بلغاریا مثل سربیا مثل مثل یونان مثل مثل حیوان برخورد میشه قوانین امیدوار هستم طوری شوه نوشته شوه که مسئولین کشورهای اروپای شرقی نتونن فساد بکنن نتونن حق مهاجر بخورن Mm -hmm. There's a lot of uh, corruption uh, as I witnessed uh, during my journey in countries, Eastern European countries and also uh, in Greece, the countries that he named earlier, uh, that uh, the laws written by the European Union are not obeyed by those people. Uh, we are, he says that we were treated like dogs, we were uh, abused, we were, uh, uh, I mean, given all sorts of torture to us. So those people are not obeying the laws, even if they are part of the European Union, or not they're not obeying the laws that european union is setting for refugees ma khodom shahid budam khodom shahid budam ke kumak ha mi amad az kishvaray europay gharbi nemidanam az kuja shayad az muassisat khairiye shayad az kilisa shayad az european union az etadi europa nemidanam bar hal muhajira fikr mikran kishvar az kishvaray gharbi amad i zehniyat muhajiri ro nemigum vaqti miyad kha khube chi raqami pakhsh mishe ma khodom shahid budam ke de motar estad mishan misli ke پیش حیوان علف میندازی یه ایتری پرت میکنی لباس غذا رو تو پرت میکنن و بسیار به یک شکل غیر انسانی کمک ها توضیح میشه غذا، خوراک، پوشاک یک،, یک وضعیت وحشتناک توضیح میشه این خیلی بد است اینالی چرا او مسئولین کمپ ها یا چرا مسئولین دولت های کشور اروپایی به خودشان اجازه میتن که ایتر برخورد بکنن Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, uh, as he mentioned earlier, that a lot of uh, donations uh, came to uh, to refugees in those camps, and the the way uh, some of those uh, items were distributed, as if you would throw it to animals. I mean, they were they were not given to us, but they were thrown, and a lot of people would rush on if it was food or clothing or whatever. Um, it was thrown as if you're throwing it to an animal. So um, there should be a consideration in terms of. recognizing those refugees as humans not as animals and treating them as animals نمیگم همیشه همیشه نه یعنی بعضی کمپاس آشپزخانه وجود داره بسیار به شکل احترام هست ولی بیشتری وقتا گفتم به این شکل توضیح میشه این چشم دیدیم است و بعضی کمک هایی که برای مهاجرین میاد در بازار سیاه فروخته میشه توسط فساد همین مسئولین کمپا توسط فساد همین مسئولین کشورهای اروپای شرقی Um, he says, I can't say that all of the camps are like that because some has kitchen, but uh, most of them do distribute it in that way. And he says, as you mentioned earlier, that they also sell certain items in the black market, uh, which are donations.
امیدوار هستم قوانین طوری نوشته شده که در کشورهای اروپای شرقی فساد کم شده عدل در زمینه مهاجرت و با مهاجرا انسانی برخورد شده and uh, my, I, I'm hoping that the law, uh, the way it's going to be written in future or set would be uh, that uh, refugees are treated as human beings. Thank you, Eric, whatever you said were very good uh, words. Thank you very much, Hassan. Thank you very much, Jawed. This is all very important and interesting, but we are slowly running out of time and there are still a few questions left. And I think what many people would like to know is what happened after the film ends. So how are you and your family now? What has happened since? Maybe if you could tell us that, Hassan, that would be really interesting to hear as well. <laughs> ایست که بعد از اینکه فیلم خلاص شد خودت و فامیلت کجا هستین کجا هم میخوان که هستین چی میکنین و زندگی چطور است خیلی خوب من سعی میکنم کوتاه بگم ان شاء الله ان شاء الله بعد از اینکه فیلم تمام شد ما بعد از صحنه پایانی فیلم که شما دیدین ما از از او کمپ آزاد شدیم خودمان رساندیم به جرمنی در اپریل 2018 so we basically got to Germany uh, after where the film ends. Uh, we moved on, and in the end of April of 2018, we arrived to Germany. Uh, our application for asylum was rejected because, according to Dublin, uh, uh, a law, uh, we were supposed to go to the country where we were uh, enlisted first. But we didn't want to go to the country where we were enlisted first. We didn't want to go to the country where we were enlisted first. We didn't want to go to the country where we So because we had some really uh, horrible experiences from our life in Hungary, uh, living in the camp, uh, we didn't want to return. Uh, to that country, so we uh, applied for asylum again in Germany. Vakili ki giriftim, vakil man adam duroku bud, va mar farib dat puli az az ma pul giriftim, vali bari ma kari nakat. We got a lawyer uh, who charged us money. Uh, he took our money, but he didn't really do much for us. He was constantly lying. ما فهمیدیم که غیر از وکیل ما وکیلای زیادی وجود دارن در آلمان و در دیگه کشور اروپایی که uh, پولی ماجرا را میخورن، میگیرن ولی کاری براشان نمیکنن. Uh, we found out later that there are some lawyers uh, in uh, Germany or other countries that they take money for in a way that they would help the migrants, but they don't do anything for the migrants. Some, some lawyers. So we, we requested for a uh, way, we, we got ourselves another lawyer, we ignored that lawyer, uh, we applied again for asylum, and uh, 2019, November, they, they got accepted. بعد حالا اجازه ماندن در آلمان داریم در یک شهر کوچیک در غرب آلمان زندگی میکنیم دخترامان مکتب میرود خودمان زبان آلمانی میخوانیم من و خانم so uh, uh, we are living in the west, uh, an area in the west of germany and uh, my daughters are going to school me and my wife we are learning german خودم در حال نوشتن فیلم نامه بعدی هستم امیدوارم بتونم تمام کنم و بعدش هزینه پیدا کنم بتونم فیلم بعدی ما بسازم uh, I'm in the process of writing uh, my second film uh, and um, hoping to find some funding for it and then uh, make that film. Uh, I also keep in contact with filmmakers uh, in order to exchange views and ideas about filmmaking. Uh, and keep uh, a strong relation with them. Uh, we came to Germany, the conditions were very bad. Some of our friends came from the bad conditions of Swiss and we went to the festival of film. We were censored. We were very angry because of all of our friends. Uh, we were very angry. 
چطور سانسور میکردن نخوندن یعنی ما اجازه مسافرت نداشتیم دو دوره که قبول نداشتیم اجازه مسافرت نداشتیم در فستیوال ها که فیلم ها نمایش داده میشد همکارای ما میرفتن و وضعیت ما رو دروغ میگفتن مثلا ما در حال دیپورت بودیم از ترس دیپورت خواب نمیرفتیم شبا اوجا به بیننده ها میگفتن everything is okay فازلی خیلی خوبه میگفتن عالیه when they arrived in germany they couldn't travel to film festivals uh, so uh, some of uh, their, his colleagues would go to film festivals and they would lie about his situation that فازلی is doing great and there's no issue Uh, no problem whereas we were always in fear of being deported ولی بعضی همکاران مثل خانم سیگال از ما حمایت کردن این هر وقت مشکلی بود نیاز به مشوره داشتم خانم سیگال ما رو تنها نگذاشتن and uh, there were friends like uh, Ms. Siga who uh, uh, helped us and who was always in contact with me and tried to support me و زندگی همینه پیچیده است سخت هم خوبی داره هم بدی داره همینطوری که اریک گفت ما وقتی رسیدیم آلمان همه چیز خوب نشد بعد چیزا خوب شد بعد چیزا بدتر شد و این زندگیه زندگی یعنی همین سو لایف هاز ایتس اپس اند داون اند از اریک سید دت وین وی ارایوید ان جرمنی یو نو وین ا ریفیجی ارایوز ایت دازنت گت بتر ا نیو چپتر استارت سو ا نیو چپتر استارت ان اور لایف اند وی دو هاف اور اپس اند داونز Thank you very much, Hassan. Thank you very much to everybody here in this round and thanks as well to the audience. Unfortunately, we are already out of time, but if you are interested in more details of Hassan Fasidi's story and Midnight Traveler, please check out our website in the coming days because we will publish an interview with Hassan today, tomorrow or the day after. So stay tuned for that. And with that, I want to thank you all again and wish you a really lovely evening. It was great to talk to you and I hope that I'll see you again very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Sigal. Thank you, Javid. Thank you, Zora. Thank you. Thank you, Hassan. Thank you, David. Thank you, all of uh, viewers or audience. Audience. For our office. For our office. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs>